cast aluminum plate based printer beds are an attractive option for those that are building a 3D printer and are looking for a high quality, super flat, super stable print surface to print on. These can be built and assembled at home relatively easily using off the shelf components and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So why should you use cast aluminum as your printer bed of choice in your 3D printer build? Well, there are numerous advantages to going with this as your printer bed. So first off, cast aluminum is super flat and thermally stable. What this means is during the manufacturing process, the aluminum itself is cast, it's not pressed or formed into its shape, and then it is blanched ground as an entire plate before being cut into sections. This means that your surface finish is going to be extremely consistent and extremely flat, and also because it is cast, when the material heats up and cools down, you shouldn't see much, if any, flexing from the aluminum itself because there is no inherent stress in the aluminum versus a pressed or formed aluminum plate or an extruded aluminum plate that is commonly found on some 3D printers. Also, the thickness of the aluminum plate, in my case here, I am using a eight millimeter thick plate, does lend it to having great thermal characteristics as there is gonna be a lot of thermal mass in the plate itself. So that means your temperatures should be extremely stable once of course you've done a PID tune. Now for the bed I am making today, this will be for my upcoming Voron V1.8 build. We're gonna be using a mains power Kinovo heater mat to heat the bed itself. And we are gonna go with a magnetic spring steel flex plate as our removable print surface on top. So starting off, you are gonna to need to source yourself a cast aluminum tooling plate in the size that you will need for your printer. In my case here, again, this is a 250 by 250 by eight millimeter thick plate. And I source this plate from Fermio Labs. Now you can purchase an aluminum plate yourself and do the machining on your own. It's actually not that hard. I do have a video below on how to drill and counter bore holes in the aluminum plate if you are going the DIY method. But when you are sourcing, make sure it is a cast aluminum tooling plate. Either look for cast aluminum, Mike 6, ATP 5. There are other brand names as well for it, but it does need to be cast aluminum. Extruded aluminum is not what you're gonna be looking for. You need to ensure that it is cast aluminum. So since this bed came from Fermio Labs pre-drilled and tapped, we are gonna go ahead and start by installing the magnet for our spring steel flex plate. So the reason I'm starting off with installing the magnet is this way when I flip it over and go to install the heater mat, I have a flat surface to work on. If I were to install the heater mat first, I would not be able to rest this flat on my desk. Now when it comes to installing the magnet, we are gonna be using the pre-applied adhesive that comes with the magnet. And since we are gonna be printing ABS on this machine, this is a high temperature rated magnet. But I'm gonna start off by ensuring that the surface is clean and free of any grease or oils that are on the build plate. So how I do this is I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol. You can also use brake cleaner or any other source of degreaser. And I'm gonna use a Scotch-Brite pad. This is twofold. One, this helps ensure that there is no residues or gunk on the surface itself. And two, I find that going over the bed with a Scotch-Brite pad or other light abrasive does kind of scuff up the surface. And then this allows the adhesive to stick better to the surface. After thoroughly cleaning the bed, I go through and give it a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol. This ensures that we leave no residues on the bed itself. And then I hit it with a heat gun. This isn't really required, but I find hitting it with a heat gun and heating the metal up a little bit helps the adhesive stick a little bit better. And also this ensures that the bed itself is really dry when you go to apply it. You don't want any wet spots or leftover cleaner on the bed when you're trying to apply the magnet. Now you can use a fancy roller to apply the magnet. Uh, if you do plan on making several of these, that may be an option you want to look into. However, I find using something as simple as a rubber spatula and taking your time and gently laying down the magnet as you're applying it to the bed helps ensure that you don't have any bubbles. And as long as you take your time, it should work out quite well. Now after the magnet is applied, we can go ahead and flip the bed over and now we're going to apply our heater mat. Now this is a Kinovo heater mat. It is mains powered 500 watt. Depending on the size of the bed you're going with, I recommend getting one that is a little bit smaller on the X and Y. This ensures that you have room for mounting options and of course that you are getting the bed that is the correct voltage for the location in the world you are living in. 
Now applying the heater mat to the bed is pretty much the same process as applying the magnet. You are of course going to have to make sure that the heater mat is as centered as possible on the bed itself and you are going to want to ensure that the bed is orientated so that the wires are coming out of the correct location on the bed depending on how your printer design is. Now once I have the heater mat applied here, I'm going to use some stiff cardboard or other sort of shim to try and block it up so that way I can place some weight on it as evenly as possible and let it sit for a day. This will help ensure that the adhesive is properly affixed to the bed for both the magnet and the heater mat before we move on to the next step. Now a day later we can go ahead, take the weight off, and we can move on to the next step. Now in my case here, what I'm going to be doing is a little bit of extra protection in the event that the adhesive fails. Now I do have printers that are running heater mats that are just affixed with the 468 MP adhesive that it comes with. For example, my V226 back here has been running a bed that is assembled just like this with just the adhesive for almost three years now and I've had no issues with it. However, for a little bit of extra safety, we are going to go ahead and run a bead of red high temp RTV gasket sealant adhesive around the outside of the bed. This will help ensure that in the event that the 468 MP adhesive does fail down the line, that we have a little bit of extra safety there to ensure the heater mat doesn't fall off the bed. Now, when it comes to applying this, this is relatively straightforward. You are gonna wanna wear gloves, but I use some tape to help mask off the outside of the bed so that we don't make too much of a mess. And then using an old spatula, you can go ahead and just kind of smear this around the edge. Make sure you have some overlap onto both the bed surface and on the heater mat. Once it's applied, you can go ahead and remove the masking tape, and then you're gonna to wanna to let this sit for 24 hours. Now, another safety feature I do recommend is adding a thermal fuse to your bed. Now, with the thermal fuse here, in my case, I'm using a 125 degrees Celsius one, if that thermal fuse hits 125 degrees, it pops and this will allow it to kill power to the bed. This is super useful for a mains heated bed because you are going to be running this using an SSR, a solid state relay. With SSRs, there is the potential of them failing open. What this means is in the event that the SSR fails open, there is potential of this receiving non-stop power directly from the wall. This could cause an overheat, could cause a fire, could cause it to melt off your bed. And this is obviously something you don't want to happen. So with this thermal fuse wired in to the live wire feeding into the heater mat, if it reaches the temperature of 125 degrees, it pops and kills all power to the bed. Now, obviously you're gonna to have to mount this in the way so that it can read the temperature of the bed. Now you can go ahead and mount this to the bed right next to the heater mat. And there is a tapped hole on this bed, for example, for doing that. And I do have a machine set up like that. However, another method and one that I'm more akin to lately is again using the RTV high temp silicone to affix it to the heater mat itself. Now the advantage of using this method and affixing it to the heater mat itself is in the event that you do have a thermal runaway, for example, and for some reason the adhesive fails before the aluminum plate has the time to heat up to that temperature that will cause the thermal fuse to trip. This way, the thermal fuse is directly attached to the heater mat. So even if the heater mat falls off the bed, the thermal fuse is tapped and hopefully should trip once it reaches that temperature. Fixing the thermal fuse to the bed is quite simple. You're just gonna put a dollop of it on the bed itself and you're gonna press the thermal fuse into the bed. You can go ahead and just put a little bit around it as well, just for a little bit of extra security. Make sure you mount this in a location so that it doesn't interfere with any sort of bed frame or carriage that this will be sitting on. So it's been 24 hours later and our RTV gasket silicone is properly firmed up here and we can move on to finalizing the bed. And what we're gonna do is wire in the thermal fuse now to the live wire feeding the bed from the SSR. Now, when it comes to connecting the wire, since this is mains voltage, I don't recommend soldering these wires. I'm gonna use a wire to wire butt connector here for both wires. I've yet to pop one of these thermal fuses in any of my printers and you really shouldn't unless you have a major issue. So I have no problem using these permanent connectors here. If you do want something that is replaceable, you can use a reusable wire connector. Just make sure it is properly rated for the amps and the temperature it will be exposed to. Another thing you are going to have to add to your bed, and again, this is a mains bed, so we are going to want to add a ground to the bed itself. 
So using a tap hole in the bed, a ring connector crimped onto a ground wire, we're gonna fix that to the bed and this will provide our ground source. And that is pretty much it for the bed itself. Now you are gonna have to go ahead and cut some holes in the magnets for screw access points for mounting, depending on how your setup is. But for the most part, this is pretty much assembled now. So we can move on to the spring steel flex plate. Now the one I'm using here did not come with the PI pre-applied and applying the PI is pretty much the same process as applying the magnet or the heater mat to your bed. You're gonna go ahead and ensure that the bed is perfectly clean with no debris, oils, or greases on the bed, no residue from any glues. You're gonna give it a light scuffing up to help ensure that the adhesive properly adheres to the bed. And using our time and a rubber squeegee, I'm gonna go ahead and slowly lay the PI down onto the bed, gently peeling the protective backing of the adhesive back to ensure that we get no bubbles and everything is sitting nice and flush. Of course, once it's applied, we are gonna apply some weight on it for 24 hours. And that is how you assemble a cast aluminum base bed for your 3D printer. If you do have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If you wanna follow along with the build, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I do stream every Saturday night and we are currently building that V1.8 as well. If you wanna help support the channel, the things I do and the content I create, I do have links in the description. And I hope you learned something new today. Thank you and have a great day.